Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage of Faithful Living Home. Welcome to my channel. This is part two tonight, and this is a really important topic. It is called, How Many Lies Do You Believe? So since this is part two, I really would like to encourage you to first watch part one that I recorded a couple of days ago. Because in there I explain a lot of important things, and this will build on that today. So, but you can watch, you know, either one first, but I really uh, want to impress upon you, if you've just come across this video first, that there's a part one, and I will link it in the description below so that you can easily get there. So my name is Nathalie, as I said, I'm a born-again Christian, and I am here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, twice a week, to deliver a message that is inspired by the Holy Spirit who guides me through this journey of sharing word, the Word of God. So, like I said, today's topic, or this week's topic, is how many lies do you believe? So, <clears throat> if you've watched part one, what are some of the lies that you were believing that God has revealed to you so far? Now, it may take some time to get some information, some clarity, um, and I would encourage you to pray every day for wisdom and guidance. God can't drive a parked car, and you have to take action daily to start moving on the road towards Him to hear Him more clearly. It's all about clarifying that communication channel between you and the Holy Spirit. And the more fine-tuned that we are onto the right channel, it's like the radio stations, you know, when you're going down the road trying to find that station, you're in a new town, and you go, hmm, I need to look, right? You, you start turning the dial and adjusting, and all of a sudden you find a station that is nice and clear and that you like, that delivers a good message, then you really want to align yourself with that properly to hear everything clearly. And so that's what happens when you start praying every single day, moment by moment, anything that you have questions on or that you, you have an issue with or a problem with or something that comes up that, that causes maybe some frustration or some panic or some fear or anything, or just, you know, a, a grumble, like anything that kind of gets you and go, eh, what's going on with that? Stop and pray. Okay? And it's part of like, you got to train yourself to do it so that it just becomes your automatic move every single time. And the closer you are to God and the, the more clear your, your path of communication is with Him, then you will receive the information from him even faster, okay? So in part one, I went over the differences between justification, um, which is often called salvation, okay, and sanctification. So if you haven't watched part one yet, please make sure that you do. It's very important. Your eternity matters, and it really hinges on that. Okay. I like working with God um, to conquer things and not let the enemy rule me. And the enemy is always in there or trying to get in our mind. And I say in there, it's in the mind. Okay. Because that's where the battlefield is to try and get you to veer off course or to try to stop believing in God or stop believing certain things that are true. And the enemy is going to mess with your mind. He, he started with Eve in the garden and it really messed her up, you know, in her mind. And she was right there with God. And his playbook has not changed because it worked on her. It's working on most of us, all of us, all the time, right? Unless we become aware of what his tactics are. Once we know his tactics, ha, it's much, much easier to just say, you don't belong in here, get out, right? 
But we have to learn to recognize his tactics and what he's doing so that we can counteract it, okay? So really, I think that the most exciting journey that you can have in life is just to say, like, very, it's very simple. God, I want to change, okay? I want to please you. I want to hear from you and I want to obey you. Okay, and when you start asking him and, and then you, you see and you start getting answers back, you have, you're building that trust on all kinds of little things that may seem insignificant, but he shows up every time. Okay, so when you get into that frame of mind that you can ask God and talk with him and, and whatnot, and, and he shows up and everything, you can get free from one thing, like a, one of the lies that the, the, the enemy is telling you, you know, and then you go on to the next thing and, and you take care of that and another thing. And then pretty soon you start to realize that you have some real freedom. Like I am so free. I have gained freedom and peace from God on levels that I never thought possible and without medication, without counseling, without any of that. It's strictly God. And he's amazing, absolutely amazing. And because when you know the truth, there's no more lies to deceive you. Oh, the enemy won't stop trying. Let, let me just be <laughs> real clear about that. Okay. But you have the upper hand because now you understand the game, okay? And you get real authority in Jesus Christ. So I want to read uh, from the King James Bible, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 and 19. And I'll read it also in the Amplified Bible version. Just Sometimes the English is a little bit uh, in the King James, like a little bit too cumbersome, you know, sometimes to comprehend fully. And so I like sometimes to also look at the Amplified Version just to kind of help um, flesh out the message properly in, in, in more modern English, okay? So in the King James Version, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So the Amplified Version. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of the past. Listen carefully. I am about to do a new thing. Now it will spring forth. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Believe God. Trust Him for everything. Here's an example today, real life, okay? Uh, I have two bunnies, and um, they, love, they, they have to eat uh, some Western Timothy hay. Well, it's, right now it's the, the holidays, the busy season, and, and, you know, stores are shut down and reduced hours, and the deliveries, you know, for hay and all kinds of other goodies and stuff, they're either, like, they happen before this period, and now, like, they're just using, they, they have just what's in store, and that's it. There's no more stock. And so my husband went out a couple of days ago to um, get some hay and he had to pick up some other things. And so he said, yeah, I'll go and get some hay while I'm out and out, out and about. Well, the one store had none. The other store had one bag and that was it. And then there was another store and but it was like way far out of the other town. And he's like, it's way too far to drive, um, you know, just to get some hay we'll we'll figure out something else and so you know he came back home with with the errands and the hay 
And the bag of hay that we received um, was a more grassy hay, not like the, the bigger, um, stronger, like nice thick pieces of hay that my bunnies really enjoy chewing. Um, so that grassy hay is just, it's not the greatest for them, but you know, they will eat it obviously. But I, if I get one of those, I try to mix it in, you know, with the other bags and that it's, it's kind of, it kind of helps to spread it out and, and whatnot. And so, um, at some point today, I woke up, uh, and in, the, in around lunchtime, cause I was up during very early morning, I did a couple of hours of Bible study and then I went back to sleep and my husband was still sleeping and I woke up about lunchtime and the Holy Spirit put on my heart, you should really call, um, about the hay. You, you need to, to find some hay today. And I had forgotten about it cause it was a couple of days ago. And, um, but the Holy Spirit like literally reminded me. And so I said, oh yeah, thank you, you know, for the reminder. And so I said, all right, let me see what I can do. And, uh, so I got up and, you know, got a, a piece of toast going so I would have some food and, um, decided to sit down and we have really, really sketchy cell phone service here, uh, where we live. And, it's a combination of carriers there there's not that many towers in this area plus we're located like right at the foothill of a of a cliff <laughs> and then there's trees and so and then there's the airport nearby and so there's a lot of things that block the signals and um, all of the homes around here have uh, landlines telephone lines except the one that we are renting uh, a portion of, um, there's no landlines on this house anymore. And so we only have cell phone service. However, as I said, cell phone service is really sketchy around here. Um, last week, I tried to call uh, my uncle and one of my aunts um, just, you know, to, to see how they're doing. And um, and literally the conversation was like, I, I couldn't hear them half the time. They couldn't hear me half the time. And the, even the, the one phone call dropped off. I had to try to call back. It wouldn't let me. And it's a hassle every single time. <laughs> and, and I use Wi-Fi assist on, on, the, on the, the, the phone and everything. And it just, it's just where we are and it's just how it is, right? So today, of course, was no different. <laughs> First attempt to try the, the, the phone call, um, the store that I knew had some more hay, but I was really far out. But they do offer delivery and I figured I'll get, I'll have them delivered for tomorrow. And so first time I try to call them, it, it doesn't even ring and then the line literally shuts off. No, you can't get through. Okay, great. So I call again. And it rings and it rings and then I see that there, it's not ringing anymore. It sounds like somebody answered, but I can't hear anything. And I'm saying, hello, hello, <laughs> you know, just in hopes that at some point either they might be hearing me, but I'm not hearing them and that it'll fix itself and that we can get through and nothing. I had to hang up. So I said, okay, let's try something else. Let's try something new. <laughs> so I put down my phone and I put my hands together and I prayed to Yahweh God in the name of Jesus and I asked him to please give me a strong solid signal so that I could make the phone call to secure the hay that I need to get from my bunnies. And that, you know, I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Amen. So pick up my phone again. And it rang, it rang. This woman answers. I could hear her clear as day, as if she was in the room with me. And I went, thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, God. And so I asked her for what I was looking for. And she had to go around the store and she had this um, handset, you know, cordless handset. And so sometimes when they use a cordless handset too, 
it can get like they lose me and I told her I said you know if we get cut off I will call back I really need to get some hay from my bunnies but she was checking her stock to see how much she had so that I could pay for it over the phone and then they could deliver it tomorrow but she didn't have my address she just you know she just had my cell phone number hopefully showing on her display and that was it right she had to go and it took a, a little a few minutes you know for her to walk to the proper place in the store and look at their storage room and everything else to let me know how much they had and so um they had a couple of boxes and a bag so i i said okay i will take all that and so then she had to come back to the phone and then um, she had somebody bring up the stuff and during that time I had to give her my address, my phone number and excuse me, pay and everything and like this call was a long call. <laughs> the chances of my call lasting like this full call zero normally, <laughs> absolutely zero, okay? And I was able to put through the transaction. Everything was approved. Everything is fine. And hay will be delivered tomorrow. And we're all good. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. And I heard and she heard me clear as day. No interruptions. No nothing. It was the perfect connection. Okay. That's not luck. There is absolutely no such thing as coincidences. And I've learned that over time with the help of the Holy Spirit. There is no such thing as a coincidence. Okay? So it's not luck. It's not anything else. I prayed for this connection and it went through flawlessly and it was a long conversation. And it went through flawlessly. And I'm like looking about seven minutes or so. Okay. And no problems. Everything was just effortless. And that's what I want to bring to you is that when you trust in the Holy Spirit, when you listen to him, when you follow his guidance, when you pray to God for anything, okay, the the answers come and and everything aligns for you and so it's important to understand that god he's everywhere he's with every single one of us who is willing to have a relationship with him and to trust him in everything and it, it's effortless. Everything falls into place like a touch of grace. When the Holy Spirit is involved and when you pray and you ask exactly what you need. In this case, of course, I asked for something specific and it was done. Okay? Sometimes we ask for things that we th think we need, right? But there are more wants or there are more things that he has other plans for us or better plans for us. And he might say, not yet or not quite that. You'll get, you'll get what you need, truly need. Sometimes we don't realize right away that what we receive is exactly what we need hindsight then you go it was exactly what i needed but i didn't know it myself so that's why it's so important to cultivate that relationship and feed it and 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 really seek it okay so isaiah 43 right chapters 8 uh, verses 18 and 19 it really confirms that God wants to continuously work in our lives. No question is too small. No question is too, well, he won't care about the phone line for me to get hay from my bunnies. Are you kidding me? Of course he wants to help. My bunnies matter to him. He loves them. And I'm telling you right now, my bunny that has access to me here in this area where I'm recording this, she's, every time I start recording, 
my my videos and I sit at the computer for many various reasons and it's not for recording these videos but when I'm working here and and having the Holy Spirit with me to help you know with these messages she is right at my feet and she's under my feet right now I'm petting her with my foot right now as I'm speaking he loves our bunnies right and we love our bunnies and so of course he's going to help and nothing is too small for him to help he's happy to help and it wasn't like i prayed and waited an hour to call again later i again called immediately and the line and the conversation was crystal clear no hassles it was like i said like we were in person it was magnificent but how do you get there is you really have to to get rid of all the lies and the interference from the enemy get him out of the communication communication channel because he wants to interfere and prevent the messages from growing through and and put doubts in your heart and put in your mind and and everything okay and so that's we have to defeat that all right so he tells us if you take notice i am doing new things i am right now in the present and always okay it's not i may do it or i could do it i am doing the great i am god is the doer he is the creator and he is there if you are willing to apply the word to your life god is always moving forward he's progressive we need to be willing to let go of the past and let go of the lies and let go of the sins and the, the things of the flesh the things of man the traditions of man that are not biblical that do not align with god's will and move with him move towards him sync up with him on the straight and narrow path that he's where he is okay so how does this work well as we cooperate more and more with god and read the bible more and study his word not just reading and then closing you have to meditate on it and really write down a verse that that calls out your name or that calls you out for something or if it's a topic that you're researching to help you with some of the lies that the enemy's been telling you okay um we we have to read the word and study it and we have to get convicted by it and we have to be careful and be extremely humble and teachable in this phase of things you have to be going ooh that stung and yeah i'm guilty as charged on that one <laughs> Whew, i need to fix that i you know i need your help god help me fix this right help me get rid of this bad habit or help me get rid of this bad thinking or help me get rid of this lie that i've been living and listening to and and taking as truth all this time right so he's showing us our sins versus the truth and how he wants us to behave right now the more we behave like jesus right then the closer we get to him because god cannot be in the presence of sin so when we choose sin over god sorry i just bumped my table <laughs> she's under there still i'm still petting her um when we you know choose sin over god we're literally putting distance so the communication becomes you know it's not as clear it's not as fast it's not as accurate it's not as right so you have to want to get out of park and get moving with your car right and get towards god this is the journey okay but beware seriously beware as humans in the flesh 
we don't like to hear <laughs> that we're doing something wrong when we think, oh, well, I've been such a good person all this time or all these years, and and it it's not it's not what it means to me. It's in my heart. God knows my heart. God knows your heart, but your actions don't line up with Him. And so that's why I keep harping on this, but if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to my first two videos in this channel called Leaving the Things of Man Behind. That will show you a whole bunch of things that we need to get rid of in our life, okay? Secular music. You have to get an app like SoundHound or something like that to see the lyrics of the songs and the, the artists that you're listening to because music gets into your head and then you start singing it or you start dancing to it. and But you have to realize what you're listening to, what's getting into your head. Is it the enemy? Because the enemy is using music all the time. It's catchy. It's all kinds of stuff, okay? But you have to be aware and so, but as humans, we don't like to hear that we're doing some things wrong. And it's just our nature. We just don't like to be told by anybody. But God is sending us to raise warning flags and say, yo, <laughs> I was there too. I, I wasn't listening and I was doing some things you know, not purposefully bad, but they didn't align with him. And I had to, when I was reading stuff, I was like, oh, yeah, I need to course correct on that. So be teachable, be humble, face the truth. Even if you don't like what you're reading and seeing, face the truth and, and meditate on that and ask for his help. Because if we're not careful, we might not face the truth that God has been asking us to face. And he may be serving us with a salty dose, you know, like a hefty load of salt, um, so that we can finally start to wake up and, and open our eyes and see the light. So do not let the enemy, and this is very key, if you forget everything about I say here, this is important. Remember this. Do not let the enemy cover your eyes and your ears because his goal is to make you fall into the traps of the sinful world of man. I'm sorry, but we live in a pagan world. That's the reality. Okay? The enemy wants you to doubt God. So if you're born again Christian, please humble yourself and listen to what God is trying to tell you. How do you do that? Pray for wisdom and discernment. I pray for this every day. Focus on developing good habits that align with the Word of God. Obey Yahweh. That should be written on your bathroom mirror, on your fridge, everywhere. Put a sticker note, Obey Yahweh. <laughs> Obey God. <laughs> All right? Pray and ask God for His help with everything. He sure helped me with that phone call today. Made my life a whole lot easier. And my bunnies are going to have all the hay that they need for a long time. And it was effortless because I asked for his help. And he's waiting for you to ask for his help. He's right there. So then once you are recognizing some of the lies that the enemy's been feeding you through all various channels, okay? Then you repent for your sins. Be sincere and genuinely turn away from those sins. 
You can do better than that. You're a child of God. We can do better. And it's not difficult. It is simple with the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter-in-chief. He is the master teacher. He is the grace and the peace that holds you every day, 24-7. He's always there. So then, start studying the chapters that talk about the areas that you need to change. Search for Bible verses about, and then type in whatever you're, you're trying to to get better on, okay? Trying to improve in your life. Like anger or forgiveness or being judgmental or uh, just like even, you know, help on thinking, releasing yourself to God, wanting to obey God or not wanting to obey God or difficulty obeying or frustrations, anxiety, fear, anything that's, that is not peaceful is not of God. So all those things that make you fret, uh, that make you fight or have strife in your life or worry or fear or anxiety, depression, you have problems after problems and things just don't seem to go your way. You're, it's like you're facing, excuse me, roadblocks and you're trying to do it on your own and, and you just feel like you're running in place in a big puddle of mud and you're just not going anywhere. That's because you need to clean up some things in your life. Just like I have. Just like I keep having to do and continue to do. This work is never done, okay? But when you get started and you, you start really wanting to work on yourself and work on your mindset and be more aligned with God, oh, he's there. And he's so excited. And he wants to help you. And so release yourself to God entirely. If you have a journal or some papers, write down the verses that you want to meditate on and pray about them and ask God to, to, to show you what he wants you to learn from this. What is he putting on your heart? And be attentive to that. Okay? What's he telling you? Learn to recognize God's voice. There's so much interference in this world, so much busyness, so much distraction, so much calling your attention. You have to learn to hear God's voice in this busy world that we live in. I have teachings on that too on my channel. Week two. <laughs> I think it's week two or week three. Don't quote me on this, but you can go see the, the playlist and, and you can go see the videos. Okay. So study Isaiah 43, that's a great place to start, to build your faith in him and let go of the past. It's time for a change. And what no better time, we're starting a new year. Time to make some changes, some everlasting changes that will blow you away. Also, I want you to remember um, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus said, here I am. I posted it um, a few days ago, I think, on my uh, Instagram. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. He's right there. And he's knocking open the door to him today matters start taking action today don't push it till tomorrow 
That's the enemy. Procrastination. Okay? Do not procrastinate. Do today what you can do today. Don't push till tomorrow what you can do today. Okay? So start today. Today matters because tomorrow and eternity is impacted by the choices you make. And I want to take you back to my part one of this series that I recorded a couple of days ago where I explained the difference between justification and sanctification and all the rewards in heaven that you'll be missing out on if you don't understand what's going on. So go and watch that, okay? Every single thought matters. And so don't let your mind roam around freely without any control. Okay? You have to put controls and guardrails around your mind. And if the enemy wants to take it out on the joyride on the side of the road, off road there, you go, ah, ah, no, 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 we're not doing that. Sorry, that, that, that's done. We're, we're no longer doing that. I'm focused on God. Okay. And today you can choose to say yes to Jesus and open the door of your heart to him fully. Not just on weekends for weekends visit at church. Or whenever you're in real trouble and then that's like your last resort. He should be your first resort every single time. Your only resort. And stop believing the lies that the enemy has been telling you. So open up the door to Jesus. Wide open. Wide open. Do not fear. It's going to be amazing. It's God's promise to us. So I invite you to like and subscribe to this channel if this content is helpful to you. And if you want to start helping in participating in what God's will is for you, share this message with a friend. Because we all need to work on this. The battlefield is in the mind. And we need to be stronger in God. And the more of us are aligned and, and following God's will and listening and hearing God and really being able to function with the power of God in our lives, the stronger we become in the body of Christ, all of us. So share, subscribe, like, please. I would really appreciate it. But it's for you and for whomever you may be helping. You never know what you share, how it may be the one video that somebody just really needed that day. Just like my husband shared with me, I was not a born-again Christian. We're going to be married 10 years in January, okay? So it's coming up our 10-year anniversary. But my husband saved my life, literally, because I was not a born-again Christian before I met him. I was a Roman Catholic. And then I kind of distanced myself from, from what was happening with the RC church because I, to me that was not of God and there was a lot of troubles and I just was a lost Christian. I didn't know where I belonged. And my husband shared that he was a born again Christian and, and we started, you know, talking about that. And then, you know, he, he had some great teachers like Chuck Missler that I mentioned a lot from Koinonia House. And I link to Chuck Missler's uh, channel on YouTube. He has passed away a few years ago. But he's the most ultimate Bible teacher and truly anointed by God. And, and because he shared with me, he saved me. And now, 
God has given me some duties that I gladly accept because I want to share this word with you and that it can change your life just as it has, it has mine. And we need to continue spreading this word. Thank you so much for being here. I love you. May God bless you abundantly. And I will see you next week on Tuesday. Have a good night.